In the last video, we talked about the characteristics and global influence of transnational corporations. Go and check it if you're interested. And now we look at the three proposals for the taxation of multinational companies. The trillion dollar question is, can governments, multinational companies and non-governmental organizations agree on a solution? There is a widespread opinion among policymakers, government officials and people in general that the prevailing system of international taxation is insufficient. The broad variation of tax policies adopted by countries across the globe created an environment where the multinationals have the incentives to transfer book profits or real economic activities to low-tax countries. The states, on the other hand, are interested in being a destination for the multinationals and their production facilities. Accordingly, there are two groups of countries, the winners and losers of tax competition. The citizens, however, can be considered as gainers from tax competition because as the tax rates decrease, the citizens enjoy positive welfare effects. As a recent development, three different tax reform ideas have been introduced, spearheaded by the United Kingdom, the United States and Germany. The first group of countries, led by the United Kingdom, focuses on traditional internet companies. These countries criticize that, in the current system, the value created by users of digital platforms, for example Facebook, is not taken into account in the allocation of taxing rights. The European Union member states among these countries tend to support the EU Commission's digital tax proposals, including a 3% tax on the turnover of certain digital companies, the so-called digital services tax. The second group of countries, led by the United States, propose a model that grants taxation rights to the markets where products are sold and consumed. The German vision of a tax system, on the other hand, is fundamentally different from the two previous proposals and recommends the implementation of minimum tax on corporate profits. Given its enormous export surplus, the German lack of support for the American proposal is justified. Furthermore, a reform based on the British idea is also ill-suited to the German strategy. The German officials know that the taxation of American technological internet companies could provoke the United States. And the potential implementation of trade barriers doesn't look pleasant for Germany because such a move could significantly harm Germany's export-orientated economy. Accordingly, an effective minimum tax on corporate profits would not induce a reallocation of taxation rights, but at least the multinational companies would be compelled to pay a minimum tax. This may be a game changer in case the prevailing corporate profits taxes are too low in a host country. Moreover, it aims to break or at least discourage the incentives of multinationals to get involved in transfer pricing and creative accounting tricks. As we can see, it focuses much more on the ability to tax the multinationals instead of searching for a solution where to tax them. An internationally agreed minimum tax would ensure that companies are taxed somewhere. The next milestone will be to agree on a fair standard for the distribution of the collected tax revenues among the states. From the perspective of the states, it would allow them to concentrate on tackling other issues instead of searching for new ways to outcompete other states in tax policy. Here I want to share two short stories about my early encounters with the tax system. During my lifetime, there were two occasions that made me conscious about the existence and significance of something called taxes. The first one occurred when I was 19. Needless to say, I was frustrated when I saw my first payslip and realized that I am becoming less money for my work because the state takes its legitimate share. Although the reduction was no more than 200 bucks, it was still painful. The second case was when I heard in the news 
that Warren Buffett pays a lower tax rate than his secretary. This doesn't mean that the amount he pays is lower than his secretary, but a lower percentage of his total income gets taxed. It was kind of surprising for me because I already knew that in the United States and Germany, the tax rate increases as the taxable amount increases due to the progressive tax systems. There is no controversy because the tax systems differentiate between two types of income, earned income and capital gains. Earned income is the money we get from paid work such as labor work in 8 hour shifts where an individual sells his workforce to a business owner. The tax rate for this group of people may go up to 37%. Capital income, on the other hand, is generated over time by an asset, for example stocks, bonds or property. The maximum tax rate for long-term capital gains is fixed at 20%. And, as we know, Warren Buffett belongs to the people with capital incomes. This was an example of low versus high taxes, but there is a case which is even more surprising, an example of no taxes. One of the largest multinational companies in the world, Amazon, managed to avoid paying taxes by having stateless income, which was made possible by the achievement of double non-taxation. If we compare the three examples until now, the secretary, Warren Buffett and Amazon, one can recognize a hierarchy where the lowest earners pay the highest tax rates the rich pay low taxes and multinational companies can even avoid taxes completely. From the perspective of justice and rights, one may argue that taxation is a topic that goes beyond finance and economics and is the keyword that opens up the gate to a broader set of philosophical questions. Actually, what justifies taxation at all? Can states build a tax system which is acceptable and even welcomed by firms, people and states? But why do states grant their riches with the opportunity to avoid or substantially reduce their taxes? I can think of three possible reasons. The first reason I want to mention, which is kind of conspiratorial, is that the rich people who rule the world, from great cardinals who stay above the system, owners of industrial, financial and media empires to highest government officials are interested in keeping the prevailing system because it's an instrument that favorizes them. Hence, the elites in this present system are not interested in increasing their tax rates. The second possible reason may be that lower taxation for multinational companies and large businesses is actually contributing to the increase of overall welfare of people by creating jobs. In some cases, it may be economically justified to offer lower tax rates for the companies, for example if they are investing in some regions or rural areas where making business, building factories is complicated due to certain factors. Among these factors may be the lack of proper transport infrastructure, roads, harbors, airports, lack of an educated workforce in that particular area, geographical challenges and so on. But under normal circumstances, why the capital incomes and income earnings are not taxed at the same rate remains a mystery. The critics would argue that in an environment where the capital taxes for multinational companies are high, the companies and the rich in general would refrain from investing. But empirical evidence from the presidential mandate of Ronald Reagan convincingly shows that this should not necessarily be the outcome. President Reagan's landmark tax reform bill of 1986 is an example where earned income and capital income were taxed at the same rate, but this did not hamper the economy at all. In the 1990s, when the taxes on richest Americans were increased once again, one of the longest economic expansions in the American history was recorded. Furthermore, the rising inequality between the wealthiest and poorest people is another indicator that the preferential tax rates or the lack of taxes for the richest people and multinational companies should come to an end. 
The third possible reason for the existence of loopholes that grant multinationals and the ultra-rich with advantages may be due to the inability of the states to reach a consensus on how to tax them. The states are free to decide how to design their institutions, including their tax system. Therefore, due to structural differences, strongest and weakest economic sectors per country, trade balances and type of economic actors operating in their countries, the governments may take different measures to protect their infant companies. The United States, as a resident for the leading companies in the fields of software development, e-commerce, cloud computing and various online services, will not accept the global tax system which will reduce the revenue, profits and influence of its resident companies. On the other hand, the United Kingdom, Germany, France and others that obviously can't be described as the homeland of the largest internet firms will benefit from a tax aimed at the profits of the foreign internet giants. In fact, only four of the largest 50 internet companies by revenue are located in Europe, led by Zalando with headquarters in Germany, Bet365 from the UK, Spotify from Sweden and ASOS from the UK again. For comparison, in 2018 and 2019, the American e-commerce giant Amazon made a revenue of over $200 billion and the mentioned companies from Europe could only reach a combined revenue of about $13 billion. There is no one-size-fits-all solution, but the potential implementation of the German proposal for a minimum tax on corporate profits would cause a positive spillover effect which could be applied in various fields. Do you have an idea on how to tax the multinationals? Or what do you think about the different rates the earned and capital incomes are taxed? Your opinion will be appreciated in the comment section. Our next video will be about development aid. Stay tuned. I will list my book recommendations in the description. If you want to earn cryptocurrencies while browsing the internet, you can use my referral link down in the description to download the Brave browser. It's free. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and see you next time.